and they've changed the uh, they've changed it. They've made it easier, so you don't have to pick one of three tabs. Okay, good. Uh, so it's uh, Thursday, August the third. Uh, we can speak. Stand up and go ahead, Michael. Uh, it's Michael Wolchuk, Saskatoon, Canada. Um, last week, uh, the only progress I made was I posted stand up. Um, I didn't get to the pie hole or the tank level. Uh, no progress on the knitting machine or Trello, which is depressing. Um, next week, I am still um, hoping to get something done, but I have some company coming. So I think the the best shot I've got is maybe a little bit on tank level with the code. And uh, I'm hoping to get a little bit done on the knitting machine for the web server. Um, and uh, ret no, that's not retro yet. Blocks. 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 It is still warm outside at the lake. It is really, really tough. By the time I get up in the morning and do my morning stuff, and then we get a little bit of stuff done before lunch, and then after lunch we go down to the lake and, and just kind of hang out or go to the garden and, and do stuff. So uh, my motivation isn't very good right now. So, um, yeah, if you have any suggestions on how I can get more energy to actually do stuff, I would be ever so grateful. Back to you. Okay, uh, Lauren Salter, Gabriel, uh, British Columbia, Canada, and uh, uh, past week um, I did just a little, uh, uh, oh, I, I received my uh, cordless soldering iron, and I tested it. Um, it works, but I'm, I'm rusty at my end. Uh, and doing solder, so I, uh, I'm not happy. I did, I did a solder on one of the new ESP 32s, but it's uh, going out to the side like this, so it's not doesn't look like it should. So I'm gonna uh, desolder it. I have a question about that after. In okay. The, in the crosstalk. Uh, so that's pretty much what it is. It is um, of interest. Uh, somebody. In another group I'm working with, uh, organizing uh, an event, said, "Oh, Trello is good for organizing events." So they, uh, so they, uh, and I said, "Yes." <laughs> so, uh, and um, coming week, I'm going to be off on a short camping thing, but it's up to a week camping. So I will. I have my. Chromebook and my portable soldering thing, but uh, I, I don't know exactly how, how that's going to shake out. Uh, you know, it's, uh, but you know, we're preparing for the fall, maybe when, when we're able to uh, focus a little more. Um, and uh, blocks are, yeah, I hurt my shoulder. I was going to say motivation. Uh, for motivation, I, I exercise a lot, but I, I hurt my shoulder lifting. Um, I'm not sure. I, was, I lifted weights one day and it was okay. And then I ran yesterday 10K. And then last night, uh, my shoulder hurt. <laughs> you know, you wish, wouldn't think that after the run, you would think it was after the lifting weights. But anyway, uh, but I do find uh, exercising helps me focus so uh, back to well, you for the rest yeah, when, I, when i exercise uh even moderately i'm so out of shape um i end up not being able to pretty much lift my arms or lift my legs for the rest of the night and that's not i mean even if i'm motivated to do something i can't so that uh, doesn't help much but um anyway um retro i got one point out of four for last week which is just basically posting stand-up um, one for attending stand-up, that gives me a whopping 3 out of 10. Um, I'll go 8 for the team. And I have uh, same process of improvement uh, as keeping Trello up to date, which I didn't do this week. Um, I guess back to you. Yeah, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go likewise with 3 for me, 8 for the team, and uh, yes, to continue to uh, 
at least follow the structure. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, I have a I have a couple things for crosstalk that can be recorded, or one thing okay. for crosstalk if can be recorded. So I don't I don't know if you're into um, Kickstarter projects. Um, there was a uh, um, CNC machine, which is like a computerized router uh -huh. um, that basically cuts up sheets of plywood or MDF or you know shelving or whatever. Right. Um, and it, it's called Maslow. So they did a Kickstarter, oh, it has to be 10 years ago. And uh, they've been uh, updating it. Like they went through version one, two, and three. Now they're up to version four. Yeah. And it's really, the, the interesting part is they use gravity to help um, sink it, sink the router into the wood. So it's, it's set up at like an angle and it's an entire sheet of plywood that they're working on. And then there's a frame around it. So there's like two chains at, at the points or at the, at the top points. And then that just goes to a sled and then the, the chains get tighter and it right raises and lowers and moves around and stuff. It, it's not fast, but it, uh, it lets you do an entire sheet of plywood at once, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, this version four, um, they now have all of the electronics and all of the motors in with the, with the router. So there's a base that's about, I don't know, 12 inches round. And they have all the electronics, um, the vacuum hose, the router, um, everything inside that. And you can make it smaller. Like it, as long as you have the, uh, as long as you have a, a flat surface, you can make this thing work. So I can, you can, you can make it work on a desktop, for example. And um, it's using not just gravity anymore, but it's using a, um, a fiberglass kind of rope or belt going four directions. So you got any four directions. It, it's now computerized to do its own. Um, measurements kind of it calibrates itself on on where it is and how far and everything like that so um it's it's really cool it's 595 dollars um and it's on for another 30 days um but you have to buy a dewalt router they don't supply that because they can't get it for any less than you can if you go to home depot so they just say go to home depot and buy such and such a version of the router and it means that i can run it like the, the problem that I had before is I couldn't justify getting it because where the heck do you put something that's 10 feet long and, and five feet wide. Right. But if you can run it on a desktop and all you have to do is connect it to the corners of the desktop and then have it do its little calibration thing, I, can, I think I can make that work. I've been following the project for years, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. And that is going to let me do projects with wood and CAD like some stands that I've been promising to make for my wife for several years now. Um, you can, you can build Ikea furniture kind of thing. Cause you can, you know, make slots and divots and whatever for, for stuff to fit together. It, it's a, it's a really cool thing. Um, anyway, I'm going to be distracted by that uh, probably in the next year because they're, they're looking to deliver in December. So with Kickstarter, maybe January, February. Cool. Um, and you said it's, that, a, it's a DeWalt, DeWalt CNC. It's, it's a DeWalt, DeWalt router. router. Yeah. So you know the you know the kind of router I mean. Um, it digs digs holes in wood, right? You use router bits. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know um, how much the routers those routers are approximately? Uh, it's approximately two fifty. But this is the, what they what they post on the site, and this is U.S. So um, hopefully, I can find it on sale sometime in the next six months. Um, out of uh, out of Home Depot or Canadian Tire or something like that, um, because it's a really popular Dewalt router. Dewalt router. Yeah, really interesting. So it it, it almost it it kind of is doing for wood what three D printing does for well what's yeah it's it's subtractive instead of additive but yeah, yeah you you can do. Um, like one of the, one of the big problems that I have when I'm doing wood projects is I can't cut anything straight, so nothing ever fits like it's supposed to. Of course, it's relevant to the wagon because yep. a lot of the wagon can be wood. Wanted. Yep, and if we're if we're doing things for the wagon, um, we can combine 
extruded aluminum and wood and 3D printed parts. Yeah. So uh, it's no longer uh, nearly as difficult to, uh, to to talk about your suggestion for having it unfold itself. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because now um, pieces of wood or pieces of aluminum with hinges on them and uh, a relatively small um, electric actuator, and you should be able to, to make it work. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, that's that's my crosstalk. Um, you wanted to talk about desoldering. Um, just I I I'm uh, I, I we're have... still recording, so I, I don't know if you want to keep recording. Yeah, it's okay. So. I have okay. Uh, one of those things with the squeeze bulb. Yep. Where is that the right thing? If I don't um, find that, is is there, is there another? There's way? another thing. It's called desoldering braid. So it looks like um, braid. Uh, yeah, I remember that. It looks like braided metal, yeah, yeah. and it comes in strips, and then you you um, have to melt the solder, and then you lay the the uh, braid on top, and it wicks up the solder. Yeah, I, I I was gonna order some. I may have ordered some. I may have got some. Okay. Otherwise, it it'd be um, uh, at any kind of electronics place or order from. Oh yeah, like uh, any kind of. Anybody that sells soldering stuff should have it. It was a, a staple at Radio Shack back in the day. But the desoldering bulb works um, as long as you can get the, um, the solder flowing. Right. And then you squeeze and you put it right on the solder. And usually it melts a little bit of the end of the, of the um, desoldering bulb. And then you, it sucks up and then you're, you're good. Uh, if it if it's got a good enough like if it's close enough to, and touching the solder and then you uh, you let go of it 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 works pretty well. Sounds like the braid is is as good or better than the uh, the other thing. And uh, the braid yeah the braid only you can only use each section of the braid once because yeah. after it's wicked up the the yeah, solder then you kind of have to cut it off and use the next section. It's right? disposable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, that's that's good. And then, uh, yeah, and then I just go back and up. Uh, is it is some tiny splash splash splashes onto the thing if if they're not connecting to posts? Is, is that okay? Not, not, not a problem at all. Yeah. You can uh, solder is normally if you get it warm enough, it'll mound. Like if you've got a pin, and you touch it with the solder, and it just kind of sticks there and there's a little spike coming up it's not hot enough um ah. if you if you get it warm enough it, it kind of rounds out and if it doesn't add a little bit more of the uh resin or rosin yeah so, yeah i put some of that on yeah and if but, uh, that yeah. kind of when you warm it up it kind of sucks it in so that that works uh, what happened was well. I, I got a big glob of it on top so then i melted the glob but must not have got too hot, hot enough because I think when I pulled it away, it made a it pointed. Made yeah, a that's point fine. Um, yeah. And the splashes are when you get the resin too hot and it boils and it splatters. So okay. there's there's stuff that happens when you don't get it hot enough, and there's stuff that happens when it's uh, too hot. So the question is, if the if the solder's not a big piece bridging two of the pads, is it okay it, to leave it or? Should yep. It be, yeah. yeah. As you as you do it more, you'll get better at it, and you won't have as many blobs. Yeah. Uh, but there is no reason to, to take the blobs off, besides personal pride, basically. Right. Um, if you uh, if you have a cold solder, that's completely different. So if you if you have your your post and you touch the outside of the metal, but you don't actually heat this up, because the pin takes usually more heat, right? Um, so if it if the solder sits the little ring of metal around but it doesn't actually stick to the post you get what's called a cold solder and it's really tough to troubleshoot because your pin connection works sometimes and it doesn't work sometimes yeah okay so it's 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 just a uh intermittent or yeah intermittent yes intermittent fault and if you if you do a couple of dozen uh solder joints and you have a couple of intermittent faults <laughs> It's not very much fun. Yeah, so it's, it's it's worth just making sure it's hot enough and uh, yes. looks like that 
volcano thing. A good yep. volcano. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm good yeah, with there's that. There's a bunch of bunch of videos on YouTube that, that uh, walk through how to do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I did it. I, I, I knew how to do it, but it's been a while since I, uh, I actually was doing that. Hand actually, I, I find that uh, looking through the videos on YouTube is almost always I, I get something out of everybody's video. Sometimes not what not to do, but um, uh, and some people have very interesting ways of doing things that you know I would never would never have thought of. Um, but nobody knows for sure how to do everything perfectly. Right. Um, so seeing other people's approaches is, is kind of interesting. Yeah, another another question that, um, as I recall, the pad is really tiny in mm -hmm. this case. Uh, so, um, is it okay if I just touch the post, or should I touch the the iron to the pad and the post? Um, if you kind of go up to the side of the post, you will yeah. normally contact the ring uh, around the around the post as well. Um, if it's not working for you. You can actually pull the post out and put the solder or put the soldering gun on to the, the little pad first for like five seconds and then stick the thing up and then warm that up and then you're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, stop the recording. And, uh, yeah. Cause that way we won't lose it. Yeah.